I assumed you knew who I was. He assumed I knew who he was. Oh my God. What is up, everybody? This is Andrew from Delray Misfits behind the wheel. Yes, I am pulling a Jason Genova and I am filming while I'm driving, but I think I can handle it. Anyway, it is Saturday afternoon. It is 4.30. I am heading over to World Gym here in Delray Beach. I am going to be filming this sickening collaboration video between Jason Genova and Ian McCarthy. I guess this is sort of akin to the YouTube fitness community's version of The Odd Couple. And uh, I'm curious to see how all this unfolds today. Um, I really don't know what exactly the two of them have planned in this video in terms of working out and training. But I am heading over there to offer my sickening skills behind the camera, film the video, and uh, have a little fun. And I'm curious to meet Ian. I've spoken to him a couple times. He seems pretty cool on the phone. I've been watching a few of his videos over the last couple years, and uh, it'll be cool to meet him. So without further ado, let's get ourselves over the world gym and give everybody the video that people have been waiting to see now for a very long time. I was snoozing like Beauty and the Beast today all day in my house. Well, Jason, wake up because Mr. Ian McCarthy yes. is in the house. Yes. What is up, Ian? Up? Straight Just thugging. Straight sickening. Keeping it real? Yes. Gentlemen, first of all, Ian, welcome to World Gym in Delray Beach. It is a pleasure to have you in our house. And I am just going to kind of shut up and let you guys train. And I don't know who's going to follow who, but... Sure. Well, um, I think we decided we're going to do some chest and some shoulders. Yeah, chest and shoulders. So we'll show you some things you can do to perhaps improve your training of those body parts, yeah. especially shoulders. Yeah. The thing is, Jason is actually a lot bigger in person than he looks on video. So people always talk about his weak chest as an example when it's actually pretty thick. But definitely his side belts could come up, so we'll show him some ways of improving his uh, lateral raise form and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. And then tomorrow will be the big day where we do back, which is probably his weakest body part, which really needs improvement. So. What, time, I, what time are you guys going to be here tomorrow? I think we agreed to five. It same depends time on your schedule, right? Um, I get off work at the same time. I can be here at five again if you want. Sure, that'd be perfect. Is that cool with you, Jason? Cool. All right. What do you think of the gym, Ian, now that you're seeing it in person? Is it everything you thought and more or what? It's exactly how it was in videos, or is in videos, so. But it is nice to be here as opposed to just watching. So. Jason, are you psyched? I'm psyched. Good. How many uh, pre-workout drinks did you have? Three. Three. <laughs> About 200 milligrams of caffeine each, so. It's nine, seven, eight, that's uh, 600 sickening so, yeah. milligrams of caffeine. That would kill some people. <laughs> yes. Some wild animals as well. Right. <laughs> Which okay, so we'll start with mobility work, which means mostly shoulder warm-up, right? And then we'll do, we've not yet decided what we'll do actually, but probably two movements for chest and then some shoulder work, so cool. All right, I'll meet you boys in the weight room. This is so sickening. We're already, we're already trying to steal Caesar's equipment. <laughs> Caesar, uh, a part-time Delray Misfit, is in the house this morning. Sickening. Sickening. Let me, let me duck in under Caesar here. So what are we going to start out with, Ian? We'll do face pulls. So lightweight, 15 to 20 reps. Then we'll do some external rotation with tables like this, yeah. weight like this. What else do we do? Well, I'm talking to this camera now, wall presses. So this is all to warm up the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So it's decreasing risk of injury from things like presses. Yeah, presses. Because people often make the mistake of just coming in, just putting 225 on the bar for bench and, and just doing just that. Himself. Right. Going right into hurting you don't do either. that, do you? You start sometimes. with one plate. <laughs> so you just, oh, it's sometimes. Some, sometimes. Okay. One time. Do you have any injuries to your shoulders? No. Okay. No. Well, luck in that case. Very Good lucky. genetics for not injuring yourself. Yeah, the seven. Let's see what we Just warm up, you know, blood flow. And the lactic acid. Oh, nice I think Ian said the word sickening about 10 times so far. It's funny to hear him say it. It's funny to hear anyone else say it. I'm not used to hearing say it. Sickening. It can be used to describe almost anything. So, 
It's like a universal adjective. Right. So we can wrap some. Have you done a set on each side, Jason? Yeah. Well, that should be enough. Here is external rotations like this, right? Oh, we're going to rotate. Exactly. Yeah. Good. So we do uh, 15 to 20 reps of that. And, right. Try to keep the movement in the shoulder joint itself, right? Yeah. So you don't have to extend the arm. Maybe if you hold the elbow stationary. Right. So you just want to. Keep that. That's better. So really think about it being here rather than yeah. cool. Is the floor is the floor flat here? Ian, in addition to training with Jason, maybe you can give him a few pointers about gym etiquette. No grunting, no screaming. I don't think Jason really <laughs> believes in gym etiquette. His videos wouldn't be worth watching. No, they weren't. They weren't. Putting, so, putting away your weights. What would be the best angle for an incline press for chest? What do we think? Is that a little high? Okay. Yeah, maybe one more. One lower. Cool, that's good. There's a better one here if you want to use it, but well, he's using it, it on the Smith machine. Using on the Smith machine. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. The second Smith machine, that one's a lot more stable. Yeah. Do we want to wait for a stable one? Do we want to bribe him maybe? Uh, he looks like he's uh, just chilling. Yes. Might be a while. We don't care about stability. Okay. We don't care about stability. We're free. Try to get your hands out a bit more, Jason. More directly above your elbows. Yeah. They're a bit ill positioned on them. Pause the top. Move your hand to the center of this one here. There you go. You want to hurt yourself. Good. Ian, can I ask you a question? You can. I read, a, I try to read a lot of the comments on these videos. It's impossible to keep up with them. One of the things I always read, people get on Jason's case for doing that, clanking the weights at the top. Is that a bad thing to do? No. I think the thought is that when someone's arm is in this position, mm -hmm. yeah. the dumbbell is here, and they don't, and there isn't tension in this direction. There's very little tension on the pec. Whereas if you're out here, obviously the pec is preventing the arm from getting ripped off. In this position, where is gravity pulling? Center. Right. Yeah. So. The pec isn't relaxed because, of course, it's stabilizing the arm in this position. Stabilizing. But really, what's being. Is I'm trying to think of what the word would be. Your ligament. Right, it's primarily the, the bones yeah. rather than the pec. So if someone just pushes up here and sits here, mm -hmm. they're using it as a rest point. Rest position. But I don't, I wouldn't say. I mean, the, the actual clanking of the weights at the top of a movement, you know, people seem to get really offended when Jason does it. And I don't really know enough about bodybuilding to know whether that's a good thing or not a good thing. I was always curious to hear a different person's perspective on that because I couldn't tell you whether... I don't think it's that bad. Well, what I wouldn't want Jason to do is the following. If you have your arm in this, can you bend it a little bit? Now, and do that with the other arm. Now, push them together. What's... Keep your arms exactly as they are. What's wrong with this picture? Injury, avoiding injury. Well, uh, the dumbbells would be hitting, but he wouldn't actually be maximizing the range of motion, motion on the pec. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, the pec doesn't act on the hand, it acts on the upper arm. Mm -hmm. So he can still do this, right? Yeah. He can still shorten his pec more. So what I wouldn't want someone to do, and Jason does tend to do this, kind of banging, I'm exaggerating obviously, but pushing the hands together not and not chest. getting this out of it. And on something like a cable crossover, this position really makes all the difference. Getting yeah. 
driving your elbows together yeah, like this. Yeah, so that's important. Definitely important. So if someone is going to clang the dumbbells together, they better be getting a good range of driving their upper good, arms together like this. Getting a good yeah. range of but look at my elbows. Right? Yeah, I see the difference. Nice and, nice and straight. Locked. Nice, no, nice, uh, nice, uh, form. Flawless. Flawless. Control that descent. Basically what he's trying to say is do the negative. Right. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> One more. Come on, Jason. Fire it up. Come on. Good. How many reps is that, Jason? Seven, six, something like that. Cool. That was not terrible. Because you can certainly see his chest is contracting, so. A big issue with presses is people will have difficulty really getting their chest to contract at all. Yeah. But with those, despite the fact that his forearms should be more out here. Still got it. Right, because why is it that you're doing it like this? You're probably not doing that deliberately, but you're doing it because it makes the lift easier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas if you bring the weight out here, it's going to be more difficult. Yeah, to get it. So I, heavy. so I would, right, so the suggestion would be to use a lighter weight and then to train yourself to do it yeah. perfectly and then you'll build your weight back up. Yeah. So I've seen you do them with I think 110s or 115s. It's a terrible form. Not terrible. But not good enough, right? Yeah, not good enough. And if you go to, to a lower weight, maybe 70, probably 70s, you'll be able to build your way back up to that weight yeah. eventually. Yeah. And you'll have a bigger chest as a result because you'll be using that weight with more much better form. Using more muscle fiber. Right. Because something that people need to realize is that your muscles, let's say your pecs, they don't have their own brain that says, this is an 85 pound dumbbell, therefore I'm going to respond in this way. The muscle responds to tension. Tension. So rip down the muscle fiber. So you, yeah, you can, Rebuild. in principle, use a heavy weight and actually not put a great deal of tension on a muscle, not yeah. cause it to do very much. Yeah. Which is the case with a lot of people using terrible form with back exercises. Yeah. So they'll actually make improvements by using significantly Less, lighter weight, yeah, more, but much better form and forcing that muscle for it to grow. Right, and this is what we'll be discussing tomorrow in the case of the lats. Someone can certainly use very heavy weight. But when it comes down to it, how much is their lat really doing? Yeah. If if someone's using, let's say, 120 pound dumbbells on dumbbell rows, and they have poor lats, of course it could be that they have just terrible genetics for lat development, but perhaps a more probable explanation it's is form. their lats aren't doing that much work, They're right? Not doing that much. So they would benefit from cutting the weight in half and then building their weight back up.